Hi there, welcome to the latest edition of Continuous Focus. In this video I'd like to talk about the inspiration and the research I do on the um, internet. I, I guess for everyday purposes, um, not for anything in particular. When I was doing my diploma with the British Academy of Photography, there was a lot of material provided, there was a lot of books and reading material. Um, but I also found that the internet was a fantastic resource for me to um, just learn the basics, to get some more in-depth knowledge and to really see what people were doing out there. And it was only really at that stage I really started to get involved with um, seeing what was on YouTube. And you know, there's thousands if not millions of photographers out there doing the same thing I'm kind of doing and I know I'm not doing anything particularly special. Um, but I wanted to share my my views and opinions of this, and I'll probably get flamed for this, but you know, that's, that's the nature of the internet. So I wrote a post about this a while ago, and there's, there's quite a few bloggers or videographers or photographers out there that um, I, I follow, and I follow them for different reasons, um, but I do tend to find when I'm personally researching something, I get to a point where sometimes I feel I have learned or can get as far as I've gotten with a particular subject or a particular person. Maybe they've, you know, done everything in their ability. Maybe they've, you know, they're repeating themselves or it feels to me like they're repeating themselves. And um, that's true for some bloggers and it's true, it's not true for, for others. So the, the, the first thing I really did notice was I started to do the usual. I follow Peter McKinnon. Um, uh, and Matty, who ran Travel Fields, just changed the name of his blog. And I love those guys' enthusiasm and what they do with their photography and their, their videography. They're really cinematic, they really know their stuff, they have all the kit. Um, they go to some really cool places. Um, but that's where it starts to fall apart for me because I've been watching those channels for a while now. And as much as I enjoy them, and enjoy Peter in, you know, having his coffee and unboxing things and getting really enthusiastic about stuff and doing lots of different filters and sound effects and stuff. I, I kind of feel, you know, if you watch Travel Fields and you watch uh, Peter McKinnon, there's Casey Newsat. If you watch them and they all get together, you're eventually kind of watching the same version of, this, of the same film but with a slightly different topic. And after a while it all starts, to me, it starts to look the same and um, even things like the, the, the focus and the, the projection and the type of shots that they're taking, the, the colour grading, the, the music, it all starts to become very familiar and for that reason I've actually, I've, I've unsubscribed from some of them, I still, um, I think I still subscribe to Peter McKinnon but I've not watched any of his videos for a while, purely because I just think I need a, a break and I wanted to do this channel myself and I've noticed lots of other people doing lots of Peter McKinnon-esque things with b-roll and making coffee and slow-mo shots and stuff and A, I, I'm not a cinematographer, I don't know how to do that, B, I don't know how the time to do that so I'm quite happy to sit here and talk direct to the camera however boring that may be for you, tell me if you want some b-roll, I can always chase Tilly around the house. Um, but that works in that context. Um, Then there's Ted Forbes over at the Art of Photography. Ted is incredibly knowledgeable in, in photography and all things photographic. And I originally started following Ted um, for inspiration to see what photo assignments, uh, what people were doing with his photo assignments. And he really switched on to you know all aspects of photography from printing to, to photo books to digital, etc. But then I realized there's a whole raft of film photography material that Ted's done because he realised a couple of years ago that film photography wasn't going away and there was a need to cover it in his um, in his blog. So Ted is a constant source of inspiration and uh, information and it feels like having this, this, this little encyclopedia of Ted always at my disposal and I've got time because his programs are a little bit longer than, than some. I'll, I'll sit and enjoy an episode of the art of photography while I'm on the train etc. So yeah, Ted, Ted's, Ted's a great one to check out if you've not looked at him before. Now another photographer that um, 
I really like to follow and I had a bit of banter with and it's uh, it's quite unusual for me to leave comments on uh, YouTube I'll do it on Instagram or, or Twitter etc but I rarely leave comments on uh, YouTube I can't help myself when I'm watching James Popsis now James is a guy from the UK I think he's currently living in Manchester uh, originally started travel, travel blogging and he's really well known for his um, uh, composite shots. They're really surreal um, and quite fun and I'm quite jealous of James's uh, uh, imagination and his flair to, to, to pick two subjects, put them together into one really funny surreal image. And he's, he's making a, a, a living from that and selling his work um, you know, online etc. And I have all the credit and praise for, for James for doing that. But the thing that really gets me about James is He's been doing this longer than I have, but James is honest and open and talks directly to the camera and I don't think he tries to hide anything or big himself up. I think he is quite natural um, and he's fun um, and he does ramble and I think we all ramble if we're not professional presenters and we haven't got the time to edit lots of things out of our, our, our photography or our video. That's why I like him because you watch you know, his, his reviews of the Peak Design rucksack and He's throwing it on the beach and hosing it down with them, um, you know, the garden hose to test its waterproof ability. You don't see that anywhere else, you know. James is always in um, the most remote places in Wales, taking fantastic photos. He doesn't get enough credit for his landscape photography. I, I think he does a fantastic job. But he always seems to be, you know, taking photos of the old sheep here and there because that's the subjects he's got at his disposal. And it's funny, that's what makes James James. Um, so if you've not been to James's blog, you really, really need to go over and see his webpage and, and watch a few of his videos. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, if there's one video to start with, look at James's review of the Narbox. It's quite a memorable review, but mainly because it proves, like in the real world, when you do uh, presentations with technology that they don't always go correctly and James doesn't hide that he enhances that and makes fun of it because that's real life and that's how we experience it but there's this fantastic little bit where uh, Emily makes a new friend and that makes me chuckle I think I've watched the video a couple of times because I still haven't decided about buying a NAR box but have a have a watch of that video I'll put a link to it below um, so you can see what I'm going on about Another photographer with a sense of humour and incredible knowledge in photography is Kai. And uh, Kai and Locke came from Digital Rev, which was a, or is still a, a store online, which which both Kai and Locke left, I think just after I was getting into photography and started on their own channels. Um, and again, they take themselves seriously. They, they're very fortunate. They travel to great places and get to review all the latest kit. But they know their stuff. And it's not just, oh, this is a nice camera because it does X. Or, they, they really know why they like it. They, they're quite, I, I believe they're quite honest in their opinions. But Kai, he doesn't hold back. He has quite a dry sense of humor. And uh, it's a mix of cultures and things in there that I think are quite inspirational. And I'll be quite honest that Kai will do uh, videos about you know, kit, lens, etc. that I'll never purchase for systems I don't own. And I'll still watch them because even if, I, you know, even if I'm not uh, going to purchase that, I still learn something from him. And I get his views on other things. So that's, that's really great to understand. I don't think he's very old. I think he's much younger than I am. And his knowledge is just incredible. And I wish I had that uh, photographic knowledge. If you've not uh, seen Kai's blog before, then I highly recommend it. Someone else I'd like to uh, follow, not just to learn from him, but to see what he does is uh, Sean Tucker. Uh, John Tucker, I believe, gave up his day job, became a photographer, you know, doing it day to day now, but the guy has such a fantastic eye. He's very calm and collected about how he does things, and I love the, the approach um, Sean has with his work. Um, and it feels timeless. And his tutorials are really, really in-depth. He never seems to be doing the hard sell. It's always about his craft and where he's been and what he's enjoying. He recently did a photo talk in Soho, but unfortunately um, I didn't get to go because it was the, I think it was the week we had the snow and I wasn't in London. 
Um, but Sean is one of those guys I, I would actually like to, you know, meet probably James too, um, if that doesn't sound creepy. Just to kind of, you know, have a coffee, talk to them about their craft and understand how they got to where they were and what inspires them, etc. Because um, you can only learn so much in a, in a video like this. But Sean Tucker's work is, is phenomenal and I, I, I think he is a one to watch, definitely. And if you're not familiar, I really would uh, recommend going over to his site. Now there are other blogs and there are other things that um, I, I follow online. Things like Mango Street, again they're quite a quirky couple out in America who um, teach you how to shoot photos and videos of things like Instagram etc. There's an Australian blog called Pushing Film which is all about film photography and I'm not sure what you can do with them. There's loads, absolutely loads of people out there. I've got um, a list of uh, favourite YouTube channels on my channel so check that out and I'll also put in the links to everyone I mentioned today. It's always inspiring to see what other people get up to so you have the you know we all have the internet really do make the, the most of this uh, free and fantastic content and I hope you've enjoyed my little take on my favorite photography blogs. That's it for now please press the like button and subscribe to my channel I will try and do some more of these videos I promise uh, let me know what you'd like me to talk about. I'm fairly new to this photography game, so uh, maybe you have some views or some questions about why I did my photography course, how I felt it went, where I'm using my photography since doing this. I'm more than happy to share. Please uh, do do that. Uh, drop me a line and I'll see you in the next video.